See, this right here explain what I did, when I did it, what strength I used, what product I used, and then if I curl the hair, if I roll it, then it does that, that, and then. Willie Morrow knows a thing or two about hair. I'm the world authority on hair, and I don't take no, I don't make no bones about it. I know a lot about black hair, straight hair, curly hair, wavy hair, you name it, I'm a hair guy. Morrow's career and his collection of hair care memorabilia are the subject of an exhibit in Escondido. It's called 400 Years Without a Comb. There's artwork, hand-carved African combs, and styling equipment. During the 60s and 70s, Morrow ran a barber shop on Market Street in Southeast San Diego. This chair here is my chair in San Diego that I started on in 1959. And from this chair, it's just, my career just took off. Michael Jordan sat in that chair, as did many black politicians and athletes, including some San Diego Chargers. Former Charger and artist Ernie Barnes was a customer. His paintings were featured in the 70s TV show Good Times and on the cover of a Marvin Gaye album. He also painted Morrow's Barbershop. This is the guy here, he has the Bible, and then there was a, the, the Muslim guys, and they had the newspapers, and the barber, he would talk to everybody, see, this is the barber here. Everybody that was anybody went to the barber shop, and we all met there and discussed all the issues, and everything was discussed in the barber shop. Morrow did more than cut hair. Once you're a barber, you become the godfather of the community, so people ask you everything, how to borrow money how to buy a house, how to buy a car. Morrow designed and patented a special comb for curly hair, and he's a collector. His collection of black hair care memorabilia dates back to slavery. San Diego Mesa College professor Starla Lewis curated the exhibit. She says only a portion of the collection is in the show, but some medieval looking equipment made it in. These are hair curlers. Hair curlers? Hair curlers. Now, an interesting thing about this that I found out yesterday is that the amps, I think it went up to an 11, and after two, you can become electrocuted. So <laughs> women were really risking their lives, once again, for beauty, <laughs> what we will do for beauty. In the African-American beauty industry, it's popular to use chemical relaxers to straighten hair. Their use is controversial. They can damage the hair and scalp. If you go to a beauty shop and you see little girls getting perms, often you'll see their little legs shaking and they'll be <laughs> because it's getting hot and it's hurting. The show looks at the history of straightening hair and raises questions as to how it became a beauty standard. Morrow created a line of gentle relaxers called California Curl. They're manufactured here in his Lemon Grove warehouse. I tried to make product that First of all, it is chemically solid. Not like, not, I don't just make products, but uh, just to be making them and, and burning folks' hair and burning their scalp. When I shake my hand, it's gone. Uh, the water's gone, but the product is still there. At 76, Morrow is still testing new products. He tests on natural hair. That's not very much, but take that piece. Then I use these pieces to practice on. He takes the Bible when he goes out to cut and collect hair. He says it helps fight superstitions. Oh, I don't want to cut it off. The birds get it. And if the birds get my hair, my grandmama told me that it, it, you won't live long. It, it, there's a lot of superstitions that go along with it. So if they believe in the Bible, I'll just cut it and I'll put it in here. Morrow grew up one of eight children in a sharecropping family that raised cotton in Alabama. He started cutting hair at 12 years old. Looking back on those humble beginnings, an exhibit devoted to his career is a little overwhelming. I look around the walls here and, oh my goodness, how could one guy do all these different things? I believe that Dr. Morrow did what he did and dedicated his life because he loved people in general and he loved black people in particular, and he knew that as a people we were struggling to love ourselves in a society where we experienced so much rejection. Morrow's story shows how San Diego played a role in a history where hair is about so much more than style. Angela Carone, KPBS News.